Today we're starting 4.1 polynomial functions. What a polynomial function is. This looks very confusing as is. I have a sub n x to the nth plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 all the way down to a to the first x a to the 0. All it is is just counting down in order. It's the highest degree down to the lowest degree, the lowest exponent. And all this a sub n, a sub n minus 1 stuff means it's the coefficient for that term. All the exponents have to be whole numbers. Bless you. No variable is contained in the denominator. So there cannot be 1 over x's anywhere in the problem. And no variable is under a radical. So you can't have any square roots, cube roots, anything like that. These are all different expressions. These are all different polynomial functions. I have four different ones. Looking at this one, the highest degree always goes first. So that has a degree of 3. This one has a degree of 5. This one here is something special. Is there any x's? It's just a constant. And what's the degree here? Four. We always go in order. Doesn't have to be a five, a four, a three, a two, a one. Here it goes four. There's no three. There's a two. There's a one. Really, how I can write this is x cubed minus five x squared plus zero x plus one half. This would be x to the fifth plus zero x to the fourth plus zero x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus, you don't have to write all this. But you understand that it's really there, but what's 0 times all these? 0, they're going to cancel out. They're really there, but we just don't write them. I just count down in degrees. These are just fillers. To save time, we just write the highest degree. For polynomial division, we have 3x to the 4th minus 8x squared minus 11x plus 1, and we're going to divide it by x minus 2. What we're doing here is we're dividing. I have x minus 2, 3x to the 4th minus 8x squared minus 11x plus 1. Remember, the first goes on the inside, second one goes on the outside, just like old dividing. What we're trying to do is find out how many times this goes in. So just look at the x. How many x's do I need to get to an x to the fourth? Three of them. So I need to have an x cubed. Now, looking at this number right here, the 3, is there a number out here? So I need to put a 3 there. All, I all I'm looking at is the x. I'm not even caring about what the 2 is right now. I have 3x cubed times x. What does that get me? 3x to the 4th. What's 3 
x cubed times negative 2. Negative 6x cubed. And there's one thing I forgot to put in there. What do you notice about my polynomial function? 4, 2, 1, nothing. What's missing? 3. All I'm going to do is put in a 3. Plus 0x cubed minus 8x squared plus 11x plus 1. Put the 0 in as a filler to help you out. I forgot to put that in at first. Now, if I had a normal dividing problem, like 7 into 84. What do I do? How many times? Then I take 1 times 7, and I got 7. What do I do here? Subtract. I'm really going to subtract here. I don't like to write subtract here. The reason why. You'll subtract the first one. What's going to happen on the second one? You're going to forget it. So I make this one negative, this one positive. It's just like typical dividing. What's 3x to the fourth minus 3x to the fourth? And that's the whole point of this, is to get each term canceling out as we go. Now what's 0x cubed plus 6x cubed? 6x cubed, all the rest comes down. Because I only had two terms. Yeah. Right. Now I'm going to look this x into a 6x cubed. What do I need? I need a 6 x squared. Now I just 6x squared times by x. What do I need to multiply this x by to get this? A 6x squared. So I have 6x cubed, and it's going to be negative, now, what's 6x squared times a negative 2? Negative 12, but I'm going to write positive 12x squared. What's 6x cubed minus 6x cubed? 0. I did that right. What's negative 8x squared and 12x squared? 4x squared, the rest comes along. we are following along here. Now I'm going to find out what do I need to multiply this x by to get a 4x squared. What do I need to multiply x by to get 4x squared? 4x. So plus 4x. 4x times x gets me 4x squared, so I'm going to have negative 4x squared. 4x times negative 2. Negative 8, so I'm going to make it positive 8x. Those cancel out. What's 11x and 8x? What's 11x plus 8x? 19x plus 1. Or wait. Yeah, sorry. No. 
Yeah, there's, thank you. It finally came up. That's a negative. That should be a negative. That should have been a negative. That should have been a negative. This should be a negative 3x. Something didn't look right. What do you mean, switch this sign? Whenever you multiply, you switch the signs, because really you're subtracting what you just multiplied by. Now I need to look at what times x gets me a negative 3x. Negative 3. So negative 3x, or sorry, negative 3 times x gets me negative 3x, but I write plus 3x. What's Negative 3 times negative 2. 6, but I write negative 6. And what's 1 and negative 6? Negative 5. Now, going back to an old school problem, instead of doing this, I'll make this a 5. That's a 1. When I subtracted, bring down the 5, how many times 7 going to 15? 2, subtract, and I get, what's that one called? Remainder. We don't, we're not, we can't do decimals with these. All right? Where'd this come from? It's a little side work so you understand what the numbers meant. So I'm left with a 5. I'm left with a remainder of 5. This is how I write a remainder. 5 over x minus 2. That's your answer. I'm not going to erase on a What all of this tells me? Does x minus 2 is, is x minus 2 a factor of all of this? It is not because I have a factor. I have a remainder left. Just like up here I had 7 into 85. Is 7 a factor of 85? Why not? I had a remainder. It's the same exact thing. I want you to try this one. Get it set up first. Just set it up. This one does need a filler just because there is no single x. You don't have to put it in there, but it's going to help you out. Because when I set it up, I have x plus 3. 3x squared minus 2x squared. Thank you one of those days. Plus 0x minus 8. Now, the reason why I put that filler in is so I can just keep putting things right underneath each term. I can go under that term, then go under that term, under that term, under that term. On this problem, we just went under the first, under the second, under the third, under the fourth, straight through. If we didn't have that filler, there's a chance you're going to accidentally put this 6x cubed underneath the negative 8x squared and accidentally combine them. What do I need to do first? I want you to try to set up first. I need to try to find out x and 3x cubed. What times x gets me 3x cubed? It's a 3x squared. So now what I'm doing is taking and multiplying both terms. 
what do I get in my second row? Negative 3x cubed minus 9x squared. Why is it minus 9x squared? I change the sign because I'm really subtracting the two numbers. It'd be negative. If it's negative, make it positive. Because really what you are doing is you're subtracting. And what I don't want you to do is go 3x cubed minus 3x cubed, fine. Then over here you go, okay, negative 2 and positive 9. You're going to forget about this negative. I'm trying to stop you from making mistakes. So I just change the sign down here, change the sign down here. You want to change the signs of what they originally would have been. These are both negatives. That's a negative right here. So what's a negative 2x squared and a negative 9x squared? Negative 11x squared, everything else comes along for the ride. Now I need to look at x and negative 11x squared. N negative 11x. So what's negative 11x times x? Negative 11x squared, so I make it positive 11x squared. What's negative 11x times a positive 3? Negative 33x, so I write a positive 33x. Because you have to change the sign because you're really subtracting. Yes, we did it for every single step. You always change it. It's like I just explained. It's really a minus in between, but I don't want you to make that mistake on the second term. Negative 11x squared, positive 11x squared, gone. What's 0 and 33? 33x. Negative 8 comes along. And the last one, x and 33x. Plot just 33. So what's 33 times x? It's 33x, which I'm going to write negative 33x. What's 33 times 3? 99, so I write negative 99. Three, 33x is cancel out. Negative 8 and negative 99. Negative 107. Does x plus 3 go into 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 8? No, because I have a remainder. So I just write for my remainder neg plus a negative 107 over x plus 3. You could have wrote minus 107 over x plus 3. It's the same thing. It goes right on the end. All of this is your answer. Now, the whole thing is your answer. Like when we go back to that problem, 7 and 85, it was 12 remainder 1, right? We wouldn't just say the answer is remainder 1. 8 has a remainder 1. So that's we still need the front part. We okay on this? We'll do one more. All right, let's try this one. x to the fifth minus 1 divided by x minus 1. I don't believe this one has a remainder. All right, on here. x into 
x to the fifth. What do I need? x to the fourth. So I put an x to the fourth times x gets me x to the fifth, so I write negative x to the fifth. x to the fourth minus or times negative one gets me negative x to the fourth, so I write plus x to the fourth. Okay, x to the fifth minus x to the fifth, gone, I know I did it correctly. Zero and x to the fourth, x to the fourth, everything else comes along for the ride. I take my x and then x to the fourth. What do I need? x cubed, x to the third. When I multiply, I get x to the fourth, make it negative x to the fourth. It'll be negative x cubed, so I write plus x cubed. First term, we're good. x cubed, everything else comes along. x into x cubed is an x squared. I go through here. x squared times x is going to be negative x cubed. x squared negative ones, negative x squared, make it plus x squared. x squared plus 0x minus 1. Next term. x into an x squared. It's just an x. x times x, x squared, negative x squared. x times negative 1's, negative 1x, one make it positive x. I add, I get x minus 1. What goes here? How many times, or what times x gets me x? 1. 1 times x is x, so I write negative x. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, so I write positive 1. What happens here? They cancel out. I'm left with 0. I have no remainder. So this right here is my answer. So something little. You got to be careful on these signs. Little stuff is going to mess you up on here. Now, what all of this means? Uh, let's see. X minus 1 times what's on top? X to the fourth plus X cubed plus X squared plus X plus 1. If I did all of this and I multiplied this through, foiled it, it would equal this right here. That's what it means. I factored out an x minus 1. I factored out a 0. They don't always have to be like that. They can be What's different here? I, I now have three terms on the outside. Still set it up the same. I'm going to walk you through this one. I have 5x to the fourth plus 5x squared plus 5 divided by x squared minus x plus 1. When I set it up, x squared minus x plus 1 on the outside, the straightest line I've ever seen, 5x to the fourth plus filler, x cubed, plus 5x squared plus a filler x plus 5. Some people put 0x, some people will just put a big giant scribble or something in there to let them know it's just a spacer. 
just like before, I look at the first term only. x squared. What do I need to do to an x squared to get to a 5x to the fourth? A 5x squared. Nothing's different. This is where it's different. What's 5x squared times x squared? So I write negative 5x to the fourth. Now I take 5x squared times negative x. Negative 5x cubed, which I write positive 5x cubed. Then I do 5x squared times 1 gets me negative 5x squared when I change it. Do you see what I did? Only, yeah, it just goes to all three. Before, you were only dealing with two things on the outside. Now you have three, so you're going to have three things on this line. I took the 5x squared times each one of these terms. 5x to the fourth minus 5x to the fourth. Those cancel. 5x, sorry, 0 and 5 gets me 5x cubed. This gets me a 0. I have my filler and a 5. You okay? Same thing. x squared into a 5x cubed. 5x. So plus 5x. All right, 5x times x squared. So I write negative 5x cubed. 5x times negative x. And I have to write positive 5x squared. You always write the opposite. 5x times 1 is... negative 5x. That's gone. This gets me a 5x squared, negative 5x, plus 5. Now I go, can I get an x squared? and a 5x squared times it by 5. 5 times x squared, 5x squared, I write negative 5x squared. I take 5 times negative x, I get negative 5x, so I write positive 5x. And 5 times 1 gets me 5, I write negative 5. Cancels out, cancels out, cancels out, zero. Right, and, but I write a negative one. 